Hey, Lake Grove family, Pastor Lillian here with today's devotional. Now, before we begin, let's take a moment to look back and to think about what did we covered last week. Well, last week we, we meditated on the relationship between the second person of the Trinity, who is Jesus, and the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. We reflected on how the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus, descended and rested on him at his baptism, and empowered Jesus after the wilderness, and distinguished Jesus from all others by filling him with perfect joy. Now, sometimes I wish I could go back in time and be at the shore, listening to Jesus teach, eating one of the 5,000 loaves of bread, watching Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, and how utterly amazing would that be? Could there be anything better than to have walked beside Jesus? Well, Jesus says, yes, yes, there is something better. And it's actually not something that's better, or, but someone who is better. It's not a what question, but who is better then? Well, Jesus answers, who is better? His name is the Holy Spirit. Now, as we begin this week, we will meditate on the person of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is relevant to you and I. In John 14 verses 15 and 17, it says, God the Father says, that Jesus prays that God the Father will give you another advocate. Now this implies that the disciples already have an advocate to help them, Jesus. Jesus is the advocate, but when he leaves, he will ask the Father to provide another advocate. Now in our reading today in the reservoir, it directs our attention to one of the Holy Spirit's titles or one of his names, the Spirit of Truth. It says that um, he affirms the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth affirms what is good and pure and true and holy. Now, this is not like a Jiminy Cricket you keep in your pocket, not your conscience telling you something smells funky, the reservoir reminds us that the world is unable to see the Holy Spirit and doubts his existence. But we, we who are followers of Christ, who love God, who know the Trinity, we recognize when the Holy Spirit stirs our hearts. Now there is a story of a woman who didn't belong. She had taken too many wrong turns on the path made friends with the wrong group of people, and likely out of societal pressure or desperation, no one is exactly sure, she married a man and it didn't work out. And then her door became a revolving door for other men. Were any of them husbands? The neighbors could only guess. Gossip swept across the neighborhood like wildfire, and slowly but surely, one by one, her neighbors started to distance themselves from her and shunned her. Alone, she walked down the road, her face ghostly dry, her eyes tired and just tired of waking another day. A large scarf was limply wrapped around her head, trying its best to hide the untamed gray hairs. Life had taken a toll on her. And out of the corner of her eye, she sees a man. Yes, another man. But then she hears his voice. He speaks to her and asks her for a cup of water, restoring her sense of dignity. And Jesus tells her, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. 
for this Samaritan woman, she had recognized that the truth, the spirit and truth in which Jesus spoke to her was like a wellspring, a refreshing drink of water. Now we cannot worship in spirit and in truth without the spirit of truth. When Jesus revealed the truth about this woman's past, what did the Samaritan woman not do? She did not wallow in self-pity or shame. She did not make excuses or blame others. She was overwhelmed by the truth. And that truth set her free. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for you and I. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, with us and in us to help or to advocate for us. And he will be with us forever. And so every time the spirit of truth reveals truth to you, you are set free from deception and guilt and shame. You're set free from self-condemnation. We are free to worship our triune God in spirit and in truth. And our triune God loves us so much not to leave us alone and abandoned. He gives himself to be with us forever. And so let us be encouraged by Jesus' words one more time from John 14, verse 16. Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever the spirit of truth. May it be so. Amen.